Good afternoon, one and all. It is my pleasure to welcome each one of you to this guest lecture, which will be delivered by Dr. D. Jyoti Mai Madam, Senior Principal Scientist and Head, CFTRI Resource Center, Hyderabad. So the topic would be on eating healthy and eating healthy. In the location, our most honorable Chancellor Madam, most respected Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Adi Community Science College and Research Institute, the guest speaker, Dr. Jyoti Mai Madam, the heads of the departments, the faculty members, and PG students who have joined us in this hall and also offline. It's my pleasure to welcome each one of you. And to take this forward, I now request our Dean, School of Postgraduate Studies, to formally welcome the gathering and give us opening. So good, good evening to all. I'm really happy to be here with the, the more with the more eminent speaker, uh, Dr. J. Jodi Mai. Uh, Madam is from um, CFTRI Resource Center, Hyderabad. Uh, so, Madam, it's uh, for the information of the speaker. Uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University is organizing various guest lectures with the eminent speaker from the respective field. In this, today we are very happy that we are we one of the guests today, Madam. Uh, the, I'm on behalf of Tamil Nadu Agriculture University and the Dean Postgraduate Studies. We are really happy that we are welcome you for this uh, evening lecture, Madam. So the lecture has been uh, not only been attended by the students of uh, community science, but also the people from other uh, other disciplines who are eager in watching your lecture. And again, your lecture is one of the topic is very catchy and uh, because everybody eating, but whether they eat healthy. And also, if you eat healthy, whether it is a healthy living, and these are all the really the questions being asked by everyone, the, whether it's a public or the scientist or the people in their specific domain knowledge. So everybody look for that. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, people are very uh, conscious on the health, and people want to look on this kind of information. Always they're looking. Since you are a uh, three three decades of research on specific area on the uh, health and food system. Really, getting information from you is uh, it's a very great uh, opportunity for us to listen from you, madam. Another thing is, whenever you talk on the uh, healthy living, uh, nowadays, the, today, this year is the year of millets, then everybody is looking for uh, which carbohydrate is better, whether we go for uh, rice eating or shall we ship to millet eating. So people will ask many questions. Uh, because the government of India is uh, promoting uh, nutri millets, uh, people uh, want to promote other other diversify their millets and try to put in the uh, try to put use in the food systems. So in this contest, really your uh, task task uh, your your lecture will be maybe covering on some of the health issues or the health concerns when you take more uh, rice eating habit or to to us shifting to millets and what kind of advantages, even though people know that it is a highly uh, higher nutrient is there in terms of uh, calcium or magnesium or in terms of iron and zinc. But this kind of foods, whether really the fortified varieties or really your foodstuff, which we are changing food habit really help us. So these are a lot of complex questions uh, uh, people around are thinking on the healthy living. So definitely uh, eating healthy is always everybody need Everybody, everybody want to do that, but many people could not be able to practice it. That is again the taste and other things which people difficult to practice. Maybe after your lecture, maybe people may try to uh, see that the healthy living by way of healthy food will be a very great concern, madam. Thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, be with us in the uh, online and uh, uh, and also uh, help us our uh, students to motivate them or make them to understand the uh, food system and in that time thank and thank you for the home sign the community college and also the uh, head of the department and the dean for giving me the opportunity to talk to you a few, uh, few words thank you madam thank you very much yeah 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 you can go to the next slide yeah variety of grains like you know cereals grains and all so ministry of women and child development is observing the rashri portion every year september month so primary purpose of this year is Mahila or Swastia. So like, you know, because like, you know, all women, if they are healthy, like, you know, the whole family will be healthy. 
so like that's what importance of holistic nutrition to assure a healthier future for women and children so further portion maha serves as a program to bring focus to food and good health discourse so like that's what because now women health is very important because we undergo a lot of like you know that you know hormonal changes adolescence puberty and then no all those things yeah next slide next slide so as per reports more than one fourth of women of their reproductive age in india are undernourished so below their body mass index of 18.5 kg per meter so, so because you know like bmi is defined like 18 to 25 optimum so about 25 25 to 30 is obesity and then severe obesity so that's why like you know bmi is defined as the body mass divided by the square of the body height and is expressed in the units of kg per meter square resulting from mass in kilograms and height in meters so it's known that an undernourished mother predictably gives birth to a malnourished infant resulting in vicious circle of malnutrition and undernutrition good nutrition is very essential for maintaining the optimal health of any individual and extremely crucial for women as poor nutrition rates have out not only in women health but also on the health state of their offspring also like that's why nowadays like you know first 1000 days nutrition so 270 days in mother's womb and first two years are very uh, crucial so that's why they should receive all the nutrients from those you no know, critical 1000 days of uh, you know the uh, in the mother's womb and after coming out first two years is very important kids of malnourished women are more likely to face cognitive impairments growth defects decreased resistance to infection and a higher risk of diseases and mortality so coming like you know from the infant to adulthood it is really important to have a good nutrition next slide please women have distinct uh, nutritional needs and adequate nutrition before their reproductive years helps to ensure proper adolescent growth well sufficient nutrient storage during the reproductive years to support healthy pregnancy and a good dietary status mainly to keep bone health during the post menopausal period so all stages are crucial no like you know as, as a child then again child bearing then again adulthood then again menopausal you know they are post menopause so women's health status is vital in optimizing their and their offspring health the eating well at every stage of life helps to manage weight boost energy levels fight nutritional deficiency so choosing the right food can not only support well being but also support the different stages of the you know their life stages yeah next next slide please as kids boys and girls dietary requirements are mostly similar like you know before the boys and girls like however when a girl attains puberty she starts to develop unique nutritional requirements as she ages the body goes through many physical and hormonal changes dietary needs continue to build make it vital for women's diets to modify to meet these changing needs women generally need fewer calories than men but the requirements for specific vitamins and minerals like iron folic acid so all these are very vital so hormonal changes related to menstruation child bearing menopause suggest that women have an increased risk of anemia fragile bones risk of fractures osteoporosis sarcopenia so thus needing higher intake of nutrients like iron calcium magnesium vitamin d folate so these requirements are you no know, much more than like you know the for the boys you know and the teenagers also the male counterparts next slide so greek physician hippocrates known as father of medicine said several centuries ago let food be your medicine so let medicine not be our food so food should be our medicine and the philosophy behind is focus on prevention so always we say prevention is better than cure so after like you know you get that and no curing is really like you know many metabolic disorders we are seeing so onset is very fast but you know to get cured it is really difficult so that's why prevention so that's why we have to take care of our nutritional requirement so that we won't go in for you no know, we won't get the attack of those metabolic disorders yeah next slide so a healthy balanced diet will usually include uh, carbohydrates 
including no starches fiber also that dietary fiber crude fiber and protein and healthy fats apart from that these are macronutrients micronutrients vitamins minerals and antioxidants so a balanced diet will include a variety of foods from the following groups of fruits vegetables grains dairy products protein foods examples of protein foods meats eggs fish beans nuts and oil seed meals also these oil seeds are a good source of oil so which is again energy dense one gram of oil will give us 9 kilo calories there is protein and carbohydrate give us 4 kilo calories but still like you know whatever these oil seeds are uh, having dual benefit rate of both protein and uh, uh, no oil also yeah next slide people who follow a vegan diet nowadays vegan diets you know they don't even drink milk so they will have only plant based origins so they won't eat meat meat uh, fish or diet, dairy but their day the diet will include other items that provide similar nutrients so they are having like you know almond uh, milk and almond peanut milk peanut curd so the tofu and beans for example are play plant based sources of proteins some people are intolerant to dairy also lactose intolerance so mm-hmm. that's why they you know like they also have to have nutrient rich replacements and foods to avoid uh, you know limited uh, the highly processed foods so ultra refined so you know even actually maida we say is a junk whereas whole wheat is a nutritious uh, alternative because whole uh, wheat the aluron layer the outer bran layer contains protein it has phytonutrients polyphenols antioxidants that's why right. so we should avoid that you know refined grains highly processed foods added sugar and salt you know according to like you know fssa <coughs> sugar intake should be not more than 25 to 28 g per day and then salt intake is only 4 to 5 g so but our intake is really high so like you know our pickles sambar rasam chutneys so all of them are you no know, you know, having higher loads of salt so we should actually you know from the childhood we should make them adopt to a this one otherwise our grandparents used to eat more salt but they used to sweat it out they used to do no rigorous physical exercise men used to walk to their fields and women also no lot of uh, operations grinding milling all of them but now nowadays no the generations and the work uh, no and uh, the uh, activities have come down so red and processed meat can be avoided alcohol should be completely avoided trans fats earlier the dalda vanaspati is being used you no know, in the bakery these one but trans fats are not good for our health so we should avoid trans fat what's healthy for one person may not be suitable for another because like i told you know lactose intolerance glucose in a gluten intolerance and all so for one it may be a healthier ingredient but for other it is so we have to be like you know concentrate on our personalized nutrition so we should watch what we are eating if we are having any energy or like you know any fat no fatigue or any any things like you know you watch and uh, no that uh, uh, stomach also like you know bloating and all because like all these no lactose intolerance gluten intolerance and some other allergies and also we should watch out yeah, next next slide please so fruits fruits are really a very good option fruit fruits are highly nutritious they make a tasty you know snack or a dessert and they can satisfy a sweet tooth because most of our fruits like you know all of them are slightly sweet in nature so local fruits that are in you know seasonal are fresher and provide more uh, they they are very important fruits are very high in sugar some of them you know like you know sapota like then again uh, banana uh, and uh, you know some uh, mango these are highly you know um, rich in uh, sugar content but their sugar is natural sugar it is not like sucrose so fructose and other things are there unlike candies and many sweet desserts fruits also provide fiber and other nutrients this means they are less likely to cause a sugar spike and they'll boost the body supply of essential vitamins minerals and antioxidants so fiber is very important so only for the small children like you know under 5 and above 50 60 years who can gulp down that's a fibrous portion but always a whole fruit is more nutritious than a fruit beverage so fruits are really like you know this one and then you need not worry about like you know sugar content unless you are diagnosed with uh, no diabetes otherwise all fruits can be eaten 
so nowadays lot of promotion on tv fruit and then blueberries and all so they are promoting uh, for their antioxidant nature anthocyanin so other phytonutrients yeah next slide vegetables so again vegetables will give us less calories but they will give an essential vitamins and minerals and antioxidants you see no a colorful you know kabaro or tomatoes brinjal bengi so all the vegetables they are very good in potassium so our you know sodium intake as salt compared to that if you consume more uh, vegetables will have higher potassium content which is more uh, useful for neuron tra nerve transmission and all then eat a variety of vegetables with different colors for a full range of nutrients so that's why like you know vegetables almost we need to consume 250 g per day and fruits 150 g so which actually we are not consuming we are eating more of rice and you know refined starches so dark leafy greens are excellent source of many nutrients like you know local seasonal vegetables are often reasonable in price and easy to prepare use them like you know as a side dish as a curry roasted in a tray with a splash of olive oil as the base in soups stews pasta dishes as a salad in the fruit purees juices and smoothies so all these can be you know vegetables are really a good source of all uh, minerals and vitamins and they give very less calories so this is very important so less calories and more nutrients that's why vegetable intake is a must and you know we must advocate all especially you know that younger generation they don't they don't like some vegetables means they completely avoid so if you like a vegetable you eat more but if you don't like so much also you eat moderately so don't stop eating so really like you know and our country is blessed with you know the real um, you know a spectrum of fruits and vegetables they are available and then like you know you need not uh, go for exotic fruits which are costly and seasonal but whatever seasonal fruits whichever are coming so please do consume so that will give us like you know more uh, health and nutrition to our uh, bodies yeah next slide so grains so grains i said no refined white flour is we call is a junk so though they are using in breads and no the baked products pizza base and all the children are liking all this one but whole grain products so because the entire grain is being used it has also contain protein it has got uh, no phyto nutrients the polyphenols antioxidants vitamins mineral and apart from that fiber so fiber is very important actually fiber controls our sugar metabolism that's why actually you consume whole uh, grain products don't use much of refined uh, no white flour maida so many people also find that whole grains and uh, add flavor and texture in a to a dish compared to like our uh, maida so whole grain because of the fiber and other things you get a very good uh, flavor and texture so all price switching from white breads pastas and rice to whole grain options now recently like you know i attended the uh, no uh, wheat product promotion society uh, you know they they were popularizing and then that brown bread what is available in the market to make people know that it is as if it is from uh, a whole grain but it is like you know a color uh, you know a brown color is being used so instead of that you go in for whole wheat bread instead of that brown bread also so avoid all refined uh, they uh, you know uh, products but uh, go in for whole grain products so our grandparents used to get uh, you know the uh, wheat and they used to grind and then uh, we used to consume whole uh, whole wheat only but off late like you know all sweets are flooded with the uh, pizza base and everything so the you know as uh, our dean sir rightly pointed out now it is the international year of millets like you un has accepted india's request and now all over we are celebrating millet utsavam and millet festivals and all so again millet millet based products also are gaining importance so they are small grains and they contain more of like you know fiber content which is very good so even millet based pizza bases millet based uh, no these uh, cakes and biscuits you know so many products are coming so that's why like you know switch over to the whole grain yeah next next slide please protein yeah protein is very important and all of us are consuming very less protein so 0.8 to 0.9 gram per kg body weight for the adults and the for growing children 1 to 1.1 gram per kg body weight 
protein is required best protein is milk protein but milk also contains you know most of it is water so we won't get adequate uh, you know protein from milk so the other sources are uh, pulses don't apart from pulses that a non veg uh, you know non vegetarians will have a you know a series of options like you know fish poultry chicken eggs and all but for vegetarians it is like you know lentils beans peas almonds sunflower seeds walnuts so that's what not only these ones you uh, know i'm only pea um, um, pulses but also oil seed meals and tofu and tempeh and soya based products they are also excellent source of protein and they are healthier alternatives to meat so meat meat alternatives like you know our uh, soya chunks and all they look like you know meat texture but it is a vegetable you know origin so that's what uh, fresh unprocessed meat is uh, they are you no know, best option for them some processed meat contains lot of preservatives and salt so that is why going for like you uh, know Uh, either non-vegetarians can have their uh, this one, but minimum of like you know if they are weighing 50 grams, so you at least take 40 gram of protein per day. So actually we are eating either rice or wheat. If both have equal nutrient. Uh, this one only five to six percent protein only is present in the public uh, distribution. Uh, you know wheat, unless you purchase a very good variety. So otherwise our wheats are also not uh, you know uh, the protein rich. the higher varieties of wheat containing only 11% protein but other local varieties are having very less so that's why like you know nuts beans and soya products so all you know they contain not only protein but fiber and also other phytonutrients yeah next one so dairy products so dairy products you uh, know is really good like you know it also contains protein calcium and vitamin d also so they also contain uh, you know uh, cow's milk will contain less fat whereas buffalo milk will contain more fat so if you want to have these one then again you have got you know options like you know the toned milk and you know other things you know that uh, whatever milk you know the butter and cheese you know the value added products so smps and all some other products we can have so dairy free milks also are coming so based on flax seed almonds cashews soy and oats and coconut so even coconut milk and all because some are having lactose intolerant for them these products also are developed so compared to our country western countries they are having lot of lactose intolerance so these again like you know our dairy products all milk and other products are fortified with vitamin a and d so they are sometimes fortified with calcium also so that's why they are excellent alternatives so some have added sugar so read the label carefully while choosing so our flavored milk it also contain flavor to enhance and also it has got sugar also so that's why like you know if you are really health conscious please read the label so whatever product you purchase or you buy you want to consume please read the label if it's good for you okay good for family parents all that you keep in uh, this one and for growing children there is no problem but for adults we should avoid uh, sugar because they you know beverage you know that mango uh, fruity so 200 ml will give itself will give you 25 to 26 gram of uh, sugar so that day you should not consume a single this one in your coffee or other sweets and all so that is why we can avoid like you know that uh, the containing uh, high sugar products yeah next slide fats and oils so fat is also very essential for energy and cell health but too much fat can increase calories again body will uh, gain weight and all in the past guidelines have recommended avoiding saturated fat due to concerns that they would raise cholesterol level but still keralites and all they use coconut oil so because they are also eating fish and all so it will balance more recent research suggests that partially replaced with unsaturated fat lowers cardiovascular disease risk and that some saturated fat should remain in our diet so at least 10% of calories should come from saturated fat and always we should avoid trans fats so that's what because trans fats will give lot of you know other these ones and uh, cancer uh, causing and all so that's why even on the label you please see so if any trans fats are present please avoid the product so other things so you know polyunsaturated fat especially here i want to say like you know different oils also don't use a single oil for your cooking so use like you know the blended oils if you are not happy with the blended oils 
you use one soy so sunflower oil pack one rice bran oil pack one peanut oil so as whatever you like you know uh, which oil you like but again like you know with the other you know we have one pack of this one pack of that and rice bran oil is very good for deep fat frying till oil is very good for pickles like you know if you use the for pickle till oil one year guaranteed whereas you use the same pickle with sunflower oil it will be good only for two months then third month and onwards rancidity because of the highly polyunsaturated fatty acid so count your plate so what your plate should contain so that's what like you know fruits and vegetables should actually fill the half of that at least one third you keep you know your uh, uh, plate with uh, fruit and vegetables and then any uh, cereals and nutri cereals you know all these you uh, know millet cereals pulses all these grains you can keep you know the whatever cereals and uh, the nutri cereals to maximum this one pulses also in moderation nuts and seeds uh, like you know in limited this one and fats and oils very moderate and milk and curds is a must every day like you know a, whatever you want to have like you know in the milk form or a beverage form or a you know, coffee tea and then curds and other things so you always uh, should have a, you know milk in your diet and fruits and vegetables should be maximum to uh, you know in your plate yeah next slide so summary of major food groups aim for around half your food to come from fruits and vegetables or at least one third so around one quarter to be protein and another quarter from the whole grains and other starches so but actually our plate will have more of starch and less of vegetable and then uh, these ones that's why like you know millets also like you know have the things with the whole grain like you know whole grain uh, products rather than going for you know the only refined flours yeah next one so present scenario india confronts a situation surplus and uh, you no know, starvation coexist so uneven distribution and wastage are main major causes m m s swaminathan you all know he is father of green revolution as well as chairman for the national commission on farmers so he is quoting a quote having mountains of grains on one side and hungry million on the other by 2020 the demographic divide economic divide and nutritional divide will widen unless we address them with our existing technologies yeah next slide so with that cftra developed a lot of uh, you know products because main cause of uh, food spoilage decomposition by microorganisms bacteria yeast and mold self decomposition by enzymatic and biochemical reactions and chemical reactions like oxidation damage by insects pests rodents and other uh, animals and mechanical causes also yeah next slide so methods of food preservation that's what reduction of water activity we dry you know there's paddy and we dry wheat we dry chillies on the yard itself so drying and dehydration will now the solar dryers also are there because of the unpredictable rains and all so we can have the solar dryers and we can dry the product so that all that fungal infestation all that we can prevent and preservation by adding sugar so for children so we can give them jams and jellies so they because like you know they they are growing children so they require more of this one and their metabolism also they will be running they will be you know having lot of physical activity and preservation by salt using our you know uh, pickles so we can uh, preserve them high temperature processing so sterilization then low temperature processing refrigerated storage cold storage freezing preservation preservation by chemical preservative so these are all you know like you know with uh, that uh, uh, permit permissible limits as per fssai food safety and standards authority of india so it should not exceed so if they are in the limit so it will not cause any disturbance to our uh, health so only in those limit you know range only we should use adjustment of ph and acidity oxygen removal so again you can put like you know the nitrogen flush packs and all the product will stay for a longer time even our chips and you no know, kurkure and all then radiation preservation so irradiation so fresh mangoes also can be exported to 38 countries using irradiation and packaging packaging itself like you know with that you know vacuum packaging you can retain flavor uh, retention you can uh, prevent uh, you know these uh, yeah uh, eggs and uh, you know the worms you know these uh, will be uh, you know they they are totally inactivated because there is no air so they cannot multiply 
So these and then uh, modified atmosphere package and uh, control atmosphere package. So even cut fruits and cut vegetables also we can preserve. Yeah, next slide. So our CFDRA developed a lot of low cost, cost effective technologies, utilization of indigenous raw material. And I can really say they are all bio-friendly technology. Even whatever waste generates, we can generate wealth from that. So integrated processing with you know, the high-level pursuit of total technology underlying the need for food safety, health and nutrition to the consumer. Uh, next slide. So CFTRA, we developed more than 800 food products and Amul also like you know we are having and we trained 6,000 people annually. Like you know we also run MSc Food Technology course, we also run uh, ISMT, International School of Milling Technology, we also conduct a lot of training programs, you know, that for fruit and vegetable preservation, cereals, grains, oil seed valuation, like that, everything is available on our webpage. Yeah, next slide. So again, five powerful nutrients, like you know, those are macronutrients, all that, these ones we have, this one. But these like, you know, micronutrients, so like, you know, hidden hunger. So many of these uh, pregnant women, lactating uh, mothers and then, you know, the children, growing children, they are all like, you know, anemic and all. So iron is a vital mineral that helps make hemoglobin that carries oxygen in the blood. It plays a crucial role in keeping the skin, hair and nails healthy. Due to amount of blood loss during menstruation, women of childbearing age need twice as much iron as men need at that age and even more during pregnancy and lactation. However, most women are not getting adequate iron, they are enemy. So that's why they are not, like, you know, they are not active, they could not, like, you know, this one. So a lot of wastage, like, you know, they are, this one, they are unable to uh, come to, like, you know, whatever, uh, you know, to colleges also during, uh, you know, menstrual period and all that. Yeah, next slide. So daily requirements, women will require uh, around 29 mg per day, whereas pregnant women 32 mg, lactating women 28 mg, whereas infants of different ages, like you know that's what, see the girls of 16 to 18 years uh, require 32 mg, almost on par with uh, pregnant women. So to enhance absorption of iron, it is recommended to include vitamin C in the diet. So as soon as you complete your meal, you, you uh, know, take either orange fruit or guava, so which are vitamin C rich, so that iron will be absorbed nicely in our intestine. So that is why NIN has done a thorough research and all that. Dietary sources of iron, so red meat, chicken, fish, you know, like, you know, for vegetarian, non-vegetarian, there are a lot of these one, but for vegetarians, that kale, spinach, tofu, beans, lentils, dried fruits and fortified cereals. Plant-based sources of non-heme iron are more readily absorbed by the body when you can with vitamin C rich foods. So that's why always like, you know, as soon as you finish your food, so have a guava or an orange so that the iron absorption will be more. Yeah, next next slide, please. So calcium, so it is really one of the essential mineral required to build strong bones and teeth. So again, like, you know, here these, uh, uh, you know, calcium, if you take after 30, like, you know, it will not have much absorption, but it only maintains our bone strength. So that's why it also maintains heart's rhythm, ensure proper functioning of the nervous system, calcium deficiency leads to mood problems like irritability, anxiety, depression, sleep disorders. If you don't get adequate calcium in the diet, then your body will take calcium from bones. So that's why again, you know, your mineral bone loss, osteoporosis. So women are at higher risk than men of developing osteoporosis. So it is essential to get plenty of calcium uh, from the diet. So again, absorption, I told you, you know, and that too, within first 30 years only, like, you know, it is more this one. So that's why, so adolescents and all students, I advise you to have a lot of, like, you know, calcium rich food, like low fat milk, yogurt, cheese, sardines, tofu, soya beans, sesame seeds, green leafy vegetables, calcium fortified foods and beverages. Yeah, like, you know, nowadays a lot of people are, you know, even our tiger biscuits, so all of them, they are fortifying with calcium because, like, you know, our dietary intake is not sufficient. Yeah, next slide. So, the requirement also about 1, one gram, like, you know, 1,000 1, mg, 1 gram. So, pregnant women also, that much, whereas lactating women will require 1.2 gram. 
whereas infants of different ages like starting from 300 infants and children 500 to uh, no 850 whereas adults from 13 to 18 year and you know from then onwards they treated so minimum of 1 gram mono calcium per day yeah next next slide so magnesium again it also helps to increase calcium absorption from the blood into the bone so moreover body can't utilize calcium effectively without adequate amount of magnesium it remarkably regulates metabolism blood pressure blood sugar muscle and nerve function so all functions like magnesium though it's required in very small quantities but also like you know if you have the as you know, the subsistent levels, not adequate levels, it can increase the risk of osteoporosis. So instead of bone getting stronger, so the demineralization, calcium gets, and the bones become spongy, and you know they are prone for more, you no know, these uh, falls and uh, bone, uh, you know, uh, breakage. So heart problems and diabetes also. Dietary sources like they are green leafy vegetables, pumpkin, broccoli, cucumber, green beans, and a variety of seeds. So next slide. So the magnesium requirement is very, you know, 370 mg only. Whereas pregnant women 440, lactating women 400. Whereas infants require, you see, very small, 30 mg. And uh, no, and, uh, no, 70, 30 to 70. So zero to one year. Whereas children from one, no, one year to 18 years. So 90 to 380. So the adults uh, age girls require more, like you know, 10 mg more than. The normal adults also. Yeah, next next slide. Vitamin D. So this is also very important vitamin. So it is for the proper functioning of you know even calcium also. It promotes calcium absorption, maintains adequate calcium levels in the system, and supports bone growth, develop bone development and remodeling. Further, it lowers the risk of bone fracture and maintains balance and skeletal structure. So deficiency of vitamin may lead to low bone mineral density, leading to recurrent osteoporosis, increase in the risk of fractures. So though, like you know, in the COVID time we were all stayed indoors, so that's why vitamin D, you know, like you know, doctors whenever we used to go, they used to say, so you take like you know, D supplement or like you know, once in a week or you know, take injections and all. But dietary sources are fatty fish, like you know, salmon, eggs, fortified food beverages like milk and all, but some plant-based milk alternatives, yogurts and juices, one will get vitamin D, not only like, you know, consume, consuming, but you also should get exposed to direct sunlight at least half an hour, 11 to 1 is optimum time. So all students, anyway, agriculture students, they go in for fields and all, but for others also, please do, you know, in your lunch break, you please walk, you know, outdoor and in the hard sun. So don't think that, you no know, sun will, you know, tan our skin and all that, but actually it improves our, you know, that skin uh, uh, texture and all that. So please get exposed. So without which, like, you know, nowadays fancy, you know, that our children are studying in international schools with, you know, AC conditions and AC schools and AC buses and AC sports, like, you know, these ones, but this is not like really we are spoiling their health. So that's why I ask them to play outdoor. So that's what, and expose them to like, you know, whatever these other, uh, you know, uh, things also, that antigen exposure, which will give actually body will get, uh, you know, uh, get exposed to and they get antibodies and then they can, you know, like, uh, you know, COVID time, don't go out, don't go out and also we never, so if we definitely will get an attack of COVID. So that's why like, you know, these uh, things, you know, plain uh, sun and sand and all, uh, it's really good. So please uh, you know, advocate like, you know, your younger and uh, you know, your siblings, so all of them. So please make them you know, play nicely. And then physical activity also is very important. So let them play. So not the you know, games on video games and TV and other things. So please ask them to have, have at least one you know, half an hour play outside. So that will give you a very good this one. Yeah, next, next slide, please. These are the like, you know, important five uh, vitamins. So the D requirement also 65 mg, but pregnant women will require 80 mg, whereas lactating women will have 135 mg. So really like 150. So it is more for the pregnant and lactating men, whereas infants only 20 mg, whereas girls will uh, have, you know, around 65 to 70 mg. Yeah, next, next slide, please. 
so folate yeah, again it's a very important uh, component so it is you know um, as women reaches child bearing age so folate plays a crucial role in reducing the risk of uh, congenital disabilities it should be taken before conception and during the first weeks of pregnancy folate is essential for the growth and reproduction of cells tissue during different stages of development including pregnancy infancy childhood and adolescence the vitamin can also reduce women's risk of heart diseases and certain types of cancers also in later life folate can assist the body produce estrogen during menopause deficiency of folate can impact mood resulting in fatigue poor concentration irritability and depression dietary sources are no the oranges green leafy vegetables beans peas nuts eggs and all so yeah next slide so women will require no folate 220 microgram so these are not even required in milligram it's only microgram Whereas pregnant women, you see, by 70 microgram. Lactating women, 330. Whereas infants, only 25 to 85. Whereas uh, girls, also, you know, uh, they should have like, you know, adults 220, but girls should have 270 of 16 to 18 teenagers. Yeah, next. So important of exercise for bone health. So inertia to diet, exercise, and other lifestyle factors can also play important role in bone health. Smoking and drinking too much alcohol can also increase your chance of developing osteoporosis by weight-bearing exercises such as walking, dancing, yoga, lifting your weights, and all also can lower the risk and strengthen, you know, and resistance training. So using machines, weights, elastic bands, your own body weight, these are effective in helping prevent loss of bones, the bone mass as you age, as we age. So bone mass, you know, will be this one. So recently, I had an excellent, you uh, know, message received. The sarcopenia, so muscle mass, you know, that this one. So you please don't advise the old people. No, please sit. Uh, we will do work for you. But ask them, no, whatever, whatever they like, let them uh, work. So that is why, like you know, the bone, like you know, really. Otherwise, muscles will get wasted, and they will not be able to, and their strength, and ultimately, they will turn into bed, bed patients, and all. So that's why, like, please ask them, no, what are small things, walking, or whatever they can do. Please ask them to do whatever they can do, which is all that, no, uh, stretching the legs and hands and other things, even while sitting and all, so that, like, you know, the sarcopenia will be, you know, prevented. Yeah, next, next slide, please. So diet tips to ease the symptoms of postmenopausal symptoms. So experiencing bloating, cramping, fatigue during the week, or so before your period is often due to fluctuating hormones. So diet it can also play an important role in alleviating these ones. So eat uh, foods rich in uh, zinc and iron. Then you uh, know that they take milk, yogurt, cheeses, leaves, uh, green leafy vegetables. So they relieve uh, postmenopausal symptoms. Now avoid trans fats, deep fats, fried foods, and sugars. All are inflammatory, which can trigger no postmenopausal syndrome symptoms. So that's why take lot of no these vegetables. So really they will help you like you know in relieving all the no these things. So iron and zinc also the three leafy vegetables they will really help you. Yeah, next slide. So. Battle bloat. No, you are your bacteria. So this is also important. Your microbial. No, what we are having in the intestinal. No, whatever these ones. So that's why earlier also people used to advise. No, after your antibiotics, so take plenty of course. So that's why like you know our microbiota, which is present in our intestine. So they are symbiotic. They take nutrition from us and they give minerals, you know, vitamins to us. So that is why. Like you know, these are very important. So uh, these, you know, um, uh, antibiotics, probiotics, uh, all of them, you know, they are gaining a lot of these one. I uh, know uh, the, all these bacteria are very important. So under fermented foods, really like you know, fermented foods like ambali, ragi java. So all these things are very important. And all, yeah. Next slide. <laughs> Yeah, then few. This one just uh, we skip on all more. Yeah, this you can skip. Yeah, next slide. So uh, choose your meal. That's what rich in protein, you know, less in carbohydrate, plenty of vegetables, less oily foods depending on your mood and what is available. 
as per your financial status no like you need to need not think others are purchasing very high this one and all so just don't get it so whatever is affordable accessible so all those only you can choose and all that yeah and then eat a variety of ones i still have more so many slides are there but i think sir uh, we are exceeding like lot of nutraceuticals no the, the slides are there you can share to others and all so the slide you know these are new you know lot of phytonutrients you know these systemol systemolin you know so many antioxidants nutrients phytonutrients anthocyanins so like that's why we say you know eat a variety of foods you know that lycopene like protein no the color in the tomato so that is anti powerful antioxidant people are ex extracting lycopene and sending as a nutraceutical so so many products like you know that whatever is available in that boya trim so that oat fiber and all so which the lower cholesterol so so many so many options are there so that is why like you know eat a variety of things and all seasonal ones you know you need not actually uh, you no know, think that it is not available and also in the season you eat if it is available as processed form also it is safe for your consumption so eat a variety of you uh, know uh, uh, foods so all fruits vegetables too much you know uh, larger extent than what we are consuming today so all the colorful vegetables each has got no beta carotene anthocyanins so, so many things so that's why so all these and really i really want to say like you know i am not taking a single pill so all with my diet only i am you know i able to function equally energetically and i make every day 10000 steps so that's what exercise and then a variety of you no know, all fruits and vegetables if you like a one ingredient eat more if you don't like also eat in moderate don't stop eating that so this is you uh, know uh, my you know whatever this one take home or this one so please uh, follow all these things and if you have any uh, no whatever clarifications doubts or anything else you can always you uh, know approach us so like you know through email through phone number no this one you can contact me and then if you have any other specific things by email also you can approach uh, this one and then now also the session is open for discussion so if anybody is having you know some uh, quick doubts we can have it now and the other later we can have a you know whatever uh, discussion through emails and uh, no phone uh, phone contact thank you thank you all for giving me this opportunity really it's an honor and pleasure so having you know, uh, know uh, spend time with you all so it's uh, really like you know i'm feeling honored to be on cnao platform and then i uh, thank dean sir and then uh, you know the uh, kanchana madam uh, hemalata madam uh, ilamarain sir and all the you know all of you who really are present no no there and then uh, watching this so thank you thank you one and all madam <coughs> the thing is now people are taking more of processed products and they are telling that the chef plus kitchen chef plus hotel and yeah. they are consuming more of retard processed product ready to eat so can you comment on this madam like they are safe to consume as far as microbial load is concerned so they are you know uh, uh, processed at 170 degrees and all so there is no harm but again like you know because it is under such high temperatures so vitamin losses will be definitely there minerals and you know macronutrients nothing happens but micronutrient losses will be there like you know vitamin especially so that's why like you know even if you you know you are you know having no other option then you go in for otherwise like you know whatever the other products what we consume regularly like you know that is the best option then followed by lot of fruits and vegetables so that is why like you know these uh, fruits especially we won't uh, no do any processing we cut and eat so that is why now processed vegetable fruit juices also again vitamin loss especially vitamin c to 60% retention only will be there 30 to 40 percent loss will be there. So that is why the I advocate whole fruit if you can only for like you know children below five year and above 60 years who will have problem in gulping down. So for them only that fruit juices. Otherwise whole fruit is more nutritious than a fruit beverage. So that's why retard process unless like you know it is 
uh, no is a compulsion that they will not be able to make or no they will not be able to then go in for otherwise like you know as far as the calories and as far as safety of the product it is fine but again vitamin supplementation you should have the other option okay thank you madam thank you